Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm critiquing my viewers' art. In a recent post, I was wondering what kind of videos you all want to see more of, and many of you said you wanted to see more critiquing videos, so here we are. A bit of a disclaimer before we start, all of the art I'm critiquing was submitted by artists that wanted me to provide feedback on their work. And just because I'm providing feedback doesn't mean I think my work is perfect or that I have nothing to work on as an artist. I'm simply just a person trying to share what I've learned over the years with others. I always feel the need to start these videos with a disclaimer, since people tend to get kind of mean when I make these videos, and it always makes me kind of nervous. Uh, but anyways, let's get started. For this picture, the artist was saying that they felt like something feels off about it, but they didn't really know what. And I think what is feeling off is the fact that the background is fully rendered, but the character and leaves are not. I can tell that you are using different assets like the pre-made sky and leaves. And there's nothing wrong with this, I tend to do this in my art too, but if you do decide to use these, it's important to try to make the different assets match. To start, we are going to try to make the character blend in with the sky lighting a bit more. I made a layer set to multiply and applied a muted magenta to the character with a soft brush. If I wanted to, I could go more detailed with the rendering and I would recommend it to make it match the sky a little bit more, but I'm going to try to keep this all very simple as to not overwhelm you. Next, I'm going to select the right side of the character, make a new layer that is set to add glow, and apply some yellow with a soft brush. This will provide a highlight and help match where the light is coming from in the sky background. Next, we need to add some lighting to the leaves to help them fit in. I select all the leaves and apply some shading and highlights like I did with the character. To push the lighting even more, I made a new layer set to add glow and applied some yellow to the lower right to help add more light, and then added more shadow with a multiply layer. I used a soft brush for this and I was using a muted magenta. Also, I totally understand using leaf brushes to place leaves. They save a lot of time, but a lot of times when I do use these, I will use the leaf brush on me with the placement and then I will draw over the leaves to make them fit my drawing style, kind of like this. I'm not going to do this with all of the leaves because that would take a while and you probably get the idea. So here's the before and after. With help from the shading, it helps things feel a little bit more cohesive and a little less like different assets being brought together. Like I said, you could also push the rendering of the character a bit more and draw over all of the leaves, but for this example, I'm keeping things simple since I have a lot more art I need to critique. <laughs> this artist sent in a few different pieces, but the one I wanted to talk about is this one. Now I'm all for blurring out foreground and background elements, however for this picture it was taken a bit too far. Everything is so blurry that it makes the character stand out in almost an odd way. We need more items in the midground that aren't blurry to provide balance, like maybe some grass or a tree. I'm just randomly dashing things in here, uh, but hopefully you get the idea. We don't want to blur out everything or else the blur loses its power. It doesn't provide a sense of depth anymore if it's all blurry. I feel like this picture fits the people who know and people who don't know meme. <laughs> the composition is very interesting, but I do want to talk a bit about this area back here. In this scene, Maria is about to die because of these people that are the silhouettes. However, they don't feel very threatening. They look like little kids, so I'm going to change up the shape. Also, I get rid of the second character because I think there was only one character in this scene and it feels more impactful. To make the silhouette look more mature, I'm going to use more sharp angles and try to draw the form with a smaller head. I don't take this to an extreme since I do still want to stick with your style. I don't want this to feel too out of place, but I will replace this person later because I don't like this one, <laughs> so I'll redo it off screen. The next thing I want to talk about is the highlight on the right does make sense. However, it feels a little too strong because the highlight from the door isn't bright enough. So I'm going to go over with a brighter yellow. I'll apply a decent amount to the floor and also make it fade a bit onto the walls and ceiling. I try not to make the yellow too bright since I don't want it to distract from Maria too much. Next, I add some red to make the red elements glow a bit more. Once again, to kind of fit the highlight you added. I'm also going to blur out the background a bit, so it's less in focus. Once again, this will help us focus more on Maria. I fixed up the silhouette and added a cast shadow from it to make it feel more dramatic. To push the lighting a little bit more to help Maria stay as the focal point, I apply some more shading to the foreground and to her. I also apply a light blue highlight 
I feel like in the scene there was maybe some blue or like a window. Um, so I'm thinking maybe the light could be coming in from that. It's just kind of an extra color to make her pop. Then I apply some simple cell shading to give the drawing some more depth. It's kind of surprising how even adding just a bit of cell shading can really help add some depth and form. I noticed that you didn't really add any, so it's something I would consider adding to your future workflow. Even if you just add it to areas like under the head and to the underside of the hair, it can really help. So here's the before and after. The new silhouette gives more of a sense of urgency and the lighting helps push the atmosphere a little bit more. Overall, really nice work and I hope this info helped a little bit. For these pictures, the artist states that they feel like the lighting they apply doesn't feel intense enough. And actually, I beg to differ. The first thing I noticed about your art is how powerful the highlights are. But I think I understand what you're trying to say. My tip for this picture is that you can make the lighting feel more powerful by outlining the highlights with a warm color like red. It's a very simple touch but can make light feel more powerful and warm. Oh, I also added some light blue to the skirt since I felt like it needed a little bit more. <laughs> Um, but yeah, here's before and after. Another thing I feel like would help your shading is using more colors. Like this piece of Barbara looks very fun based off of her pose and expression, but the lighting makes it feel not as fun. For example, I will select the shadow area and apply some colors using the screen layer function. I apply a range of colors that start out warm by the highlight and get cooler as we move away. Adding more colors can help the shadows feel more interesting. I'm going to attempt to add some more color to this piece by using correction layers since it isn't very easy for me to recolor or shade this entire piece. Um, but yeah, I think you have a good understanding of lighting and shadow placement and the values definitely contrast. I think you just need to add some more colors to your work if you want to um, because that can help things feel more impactful. Oh, and to make things feel a little interesting, I added some bounce light or a secondary blue light source. I always love adding secondary light sources. They can make the lighting feel very interesting and also help define the forms a bit more. Um, so yeah, I hope this helps a little bit and keep up the good work. So this character looks really cool. And for this piece, what stuck out to me is the size of the forehead. It feels a bit out of proportion. If I try to draw what I think the rest of her head shape looks like under the hair, we get something like this. A lot of times when drawing heads, we want to aim to put the eyes somewhere around the halfway point. Obviously, this can vary depending on style and the size of the eyes that you draw. But since you have a more semi-realistic facial proportion, I feel like the eye should be placed on the head in a slightly more realistic way. So I'm going to use the liquify tool to kind of push the facial features a bit higher and also bring the hair in and hairline down. This will make the forehead area look smaller and hopefully more in proportion. Also, the way her neck bumps out at the bottom was bothering me, so I pushed it in a little bit. And so here's the before and after. The forehead now feels a little bit more in proportion than it did. Like I said, your character is very cool and I hope this helps. Next is going to be a sort of lightning round. I'm going to quickly give some feedback to a number of pieces and we will call this segment Quick Critiques. The hands feel a bit boxy, I'd recommend drawing them a little rounder. The thigh gap feels a bit out of place. Since the fabric bunches out on the outside, I feel like it should do the same on the inside. So I'd recommend filling that area in. Lastly, the rendering on the knees, while it is very good, it doesn't feel chibi-like. It feels a bit out of place. I would recommend going with something a bit more simple to fit the rest of the character. This artist included an old piece and a new piece, and your improvement is amazing. Something I'd recommend is adding a bit more hard-edged shadows to your rendering. Sometimes harder-edged shadows can help define shapes and forms a little bit more, and I feel like you can pull back on the soft shading a little bit. It's making the shading feel a little bit off, um, but it did take me a little while to notice that you made the shadows so intense because they are being lit by a spotlight. So I'd recommend making this more apparent by applying more shadows to kind of frame in the light. This artist feels like there was something off of the face and I feel like it may be the nose. Because all of the other features have line art, it makes the nose feel a bit out of place or not as defined. So I would either add some more shading to help define it or add some line art to it. The legs feel a bit too long. A lot of times you want the legs to be the same length as the upper body. So if you take the measurement of the torso and the head, you'll get how long the legs should be. As usual, this can vary with style and people. 
but this is a good base measurement to go off of. For this piece, the cast shadow doesn't feel like it's matching the perspective of the character. I'd recommend squishing it down a bit more. Also, I feel like the pose is a little bit off balanced. So I'm going to move one leg out a bit and also slightly rotate the whole thing to help it feel like she's not going to tip over. The moon doesn't really shine down an array of light like this. The moon gets light from the sun and then the light bounces off the moon so it radiates out from the moon. You can add light rays coming from the moon, they just need to fan out instead of being condensed into one ray. The ponytail feels a bit slapped on, I'd recommend drawing more of the hair flowing into the ponytail to help it make more sense with the rest of the hair. The shading of the mouth feels a little bit off to me. I understand the stylistic choice of filling it with just pink, but I would apply the darker color to the top and have it fade to a lighter color like so to kind of better show the depth and form of the mouth. The eyes are too close together. A lot of times you want to aim to have about one eye width in between the eye. Of course, as I say, this can vary with style and how things are proportioned, but in this case, I recommend moving them apart a bit. I don't really know if you'd have to aim for a full eye's width since you draw the eyes pretty large, but a bit further apart would definitely help. Something that stood out to me is the nose. Because the indication of the nostrils is so small and towards the inside, it makes the outer edges of the nostrils feel very thick. So I'd recommend extending the indication of the nostrils outwards. And that is the end of Quick Critiques. For the next few artists, we're going to be talking about ears. I noticed that for your style, you like to draw the ears very large, and this can be a very cute stylistic choice. However, I would maybe recommend dialing the size of the ears back a bit to help them feel not too out of proportion. I also recommend making the inner detail of the ear fill more of the space so that the ears don't feel as um, thick, I guess, if that makes sense. For example, with this guy's ears, the outer cartilage feels very thick because the inside details are smaller in comparison. But by shrinking down the ear size a bit and making the inner detail larger, it helps lessen this feeling. I definitely understand having details about your style that you like that makes it unique. So I definitely don't want to say you should get rid of the large ears. Just maybe try to play around with how you proportion them so they feel a bit more natural on the head. Overall, your art is very cute and I hope this helps. Like I mentioned, we'll be talking about the ear, but for your art, I also wanted to mention the different saturation levels of the colors. You used a very saturated color for the shadows, but a very muted color for the blush, and this makes the blush feel very dull and like it doesn't go with the rest of the coloring. So I would recommend changing the color to be closer to the shadow color you used. A lot of times for coloring, you want to try to use a similar saturation amount. If you have some of the shading be really dull, but then have some of the other shading be very vibrant, it can make the piece feel less cohesive. Of course, there could be lighting situations where you do have some dull shadows and some vibrant shadows, um, but I don't really feel like that applies to this piece. So I'd recommend trying to use shadows that are more similar in saturation. For the ear, it is drawn very large. A lot of times you want to try to draw the length of the ear with the top lining up of the eye and the bottom lining up of the nose. Obviously, this measurement can change with style or with the age of the character, but this is a good general rule to follow and can help the ears from getting too small or too big. Since you seem to like to draw larger ears, I did draw it a bit larger than I usually do. For this last picture of the ear saga, the artist said they didn't know how to draw the inner part of the ear, and this area can be really confusing, so let's look at a real ear as a reference. So we have a line that kind of curves around the edge of the ear and goes in. Then we have a line that comes from inside. That line curves down and kind of hooks in. We also have these shapes that kind of dent into the ear. Now this all looks very complicated. So a lot of times artists will simplify the ear. What I will often do for my ears is I'll draw a line around the outside edge of the ear that curves down and bumps out towards the bottom. And I'll draw one or two lines for the inner detail of the ear. It's more simple and easy for me to remember, but still kind of resembles an ear. I will apply my way of drawing ears to the character. I draw the shape that curves around, goes down, and then bumps out. Apply some shading to add depth to the ear. Draw the lines, and if you want to push things a bit more, you can also add a little bit more shading. I also like to add a bit of blush to the ears, so I'll add that with a soft brush. 
I think it makes them feel a little bit more lively. So here's the before and after for the ear. But I do have one more tiny thing I want to talk about. I kind of get what you're doing with the eyelashes. But because they are so far away from the eye, it makes them feel a bit out of place, I feel like. I would recommend moving them a bit closer to the eye so that they don't feel like they are coming out of the middle of the cheek. But I do still leave a little bit of space. Um, because there often is like a little bit of space between our eye and where the eyelashes come out. So I can understand making this stylistic choice. I really like the soft colors you use and I hope this info helped a bit. Something that stuck out to me about your style is the shapes you use to draw hair and the way you render it. It is very detailed, but it feels detailed in a way that makes the texture of the hair feel a little bit off. For the hair, you use the shape that kind of swerves in and out, and this can be good to do. However, I often recommend this kind of shape for slightly longer hair pieces. Since the shape is being applied to the bangs, and they also have these extra strands that come off, it makes the hair feel almost wet or messy. Also, for the side parts of the hair, it has a lot of strands that curve off of the main shape. However, the texture isn't really following the hair strands. And this makes it harder for the viewer to read and understand the shape. I'm going to paint over all of the hair to hide it for now. And I'm going to draw over this. Now for the main bang area, I'm going to keep that kind of swervy shape that you seem to like. However, I'm going to add variety by having the strands on the side just curve in. This will help the bangs keep a feeling of volume and variety. I draw more of her bangs with some curving shapes and start to draw the side portion of the hair. However, because I did notice that the hair is more on the side of her head, I decided to extend her bangs out a bit more, since there should be more hair towards the front framing her face. Now, it doesn't quite make sense that the hair is flowing in front of her face in this way, but for the sake of keeping the design the same, I'll draw the hair in this way. I try to use a variety of smaller and larger shapes. To help the hair have volume, I'm going to indicate the hair part a little bit. For a lot of the lower hair strands, you had them curve towards the character, but I'm going to add some strands on the outer edge that curve out. I find that this often helps the hair feel a bit more fun and cute, if that's the kind of vibe you're going for. For the pencil shading, you do an overall really nice job of adding texture to the hair. I just want to say a reminder to be careful to make sure the texture is following the flow of the hair strands, and maybe allow for more of the white of the paper to shine through so that the hair looks shinier. However, this of course is a personal preference. I probably make the hair look a little bit too shiny a lot of times <laughs> because I really like shiny hair. However, if you want the hair to look less shiny, you can keep texturing it in the way that you've been doing. I would just really make sure that that texture is following the hair flow. And honestly, this way of shading was starting to kind of kill my hand <laughs> because I was drawing a lot of small lines and it's very repetitive. So I didn't shade the whole thing. Um, sorry for stopping halfway. Uh, but I hope this helps get the idea across. Well, those are all of the pictures for this video. I want to say thank you so much to everyone that submitted their art. And I'm sorry I can't feature everyone. There are hundreds upon hundreds of submissions. Uh, but I hope this was helpful to you in some way, even if your art wasn't featured. To stay up to date for when I plan to do videos like this, consider following me on Twitter or X and also on Instagram since I always announce when I will be doing these over there. Before we end, I want to say a huge thank you to my wonderful YouTube members and Patreon patrons for their support. It means so much to me. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!